I made this 19 inch studio rack using two bits of wood. The desk I have is big, bulky, and I don't want it in my new space. So my idea is a sit stand desk with a side cart. I like Northwood Acoustics DMP desk. The side racks have a nice shape. So I traced the six side shape on SketchUp. Then I drew it as a symmetrical shape. But the load went past the middle and it won't work because it'll topple. So I lined the body of the shape to draw a five sided shape. This moved the load over the middle and faced the gear up for easier access. But I didn't want to cut big sheets of plywood or MDF and screw together a box. I wanted a challenge. So what if we got rid of two of the five sides and suspended the gear within a frame? But not any frame, a frame of timber wrapping around and suspending the gear. In SketchUp, everything is a cool idea, but drawings are one thing, the real world is another. So I researched and chose to use biscuit joint miters. The large contact area in a miter along the grain creates a very strong bond. The biscuits help with torsion strength as well as lining the faces for an even surface. And the lateral strength in this actually comes from the filled racks. For the rack gears, I wanted a recessed slot for them to sit in so there would be no visible screws or hardware. I then created a cut sheet based on available wood sizes of dressed timber in Australia, using only two pieces of timber, 1.8 and 2.4 meters, 90 by 32 millimeter Tasmanian oak. To start, I set up the mitre saw using a speed square, digital angle finder and some scrap timber. Setting it up to cut 90 degrees on all X, Y and Z axes of the mitre cut. Then I cut the ends of the two pieces of timber to a true 90 degrees. Next, I set the Y axis of the mitre saw to a 45 degree angle. Again, I used a speed square and checked with some scrap wood. Then cut the 45 degree miters needed for the bottom of the legs. I did this again with the 120 60 degree miters and finished cutting all the lengths from my cut sheet. The angles I cut were correct when I checked with the speed square and digital angle, but when I dry fit the joints there were some gaps. So for a flush seam, I used scrap wood to make a jig for butterfly cuts. A butterfly cut is where you cut along the edge of two pieces at the same time. The width of the blade must be bigger than the gap between the two edges. Any movement of the blade on one side of the cut is mirrored on the second piece at the same time, so the movement will carry and they will join flush with each other. Next, I had to cut slots for the rack ears. I made a sled that was 90mm high with some scrap wood and did a test cut to make sure this would all work. I was very happy that it worked. Bucky. Perfect. Take a look at that. That fits in. It's a bit of epoxy. That's so, it's fucking perfect. No fucking screws. That is great. Cutting the slots in the actual pieces was harder. I had to plunge the saw with no guide down onto a track. This isn't a plunge saw, so I was scared I was going to clip the track, start the cut too wide, or get kicked back and ruin the piece I was cutting. Thankfully, this didn't happen. Once I did this, I cut biscuit joints and did the glue up. I used the jigs I made for the butterfly cuts to clamp and hold the joints in position while they dried. The week after, I put 50 kilograms of weights on the end of the desk to test how strong the joint was. The joint did not break and the rack won't ever have more than 30 kilograms of gear on it anyway, so I'm happy with this. I rounded the edges with a 3mm bit, sanded at 60, 80, 120 and 180 grit, then finished with Rubio Monocoat. For the rack rails, I cut the ends with an angle grinder so they would fit within the groove of the circular saw, and this is the final result. Before I bring this to the new studio, I'm going to need to make some new cables to keep things looking neat and clean, but if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment in the section below, and thanks for watching.